here we are again, just filming in a slightly different environment. Okay, bye Felicia. Bye Felicia! <laughs> Sorry. Um, we're going to be filming some creepy stories, I believe. We are indeed. Hey, you are going to... Okay. All right. Are you ready to be creeped out? Ready yourselves, <coughs> people. <coughs> oh God, you've got a hole in your roof. It's fine. That's creepy. We're gonna die. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. Sorry. Russian researchers in the late 1940s kept five people awake for 15 days using an experimental gas-based simulant. I have stutter, that's probably worth mentioning. And sometimes I do stuff like that, drag my words out, stimulant. I'm sorry, I'm awful at reading. Um, anyway. So am I to be fair. Retarded if you buddies. guys If you guys have seen my other creepy reading thing, yeah. Oh Don't God. bother if you haven't. Um, you're welcome to add your input at any point. Probably worth mentioning. You think something's sure. creepy. Um, they were kept in a sealed environment to carefully monitor their oxygen intake so the gas didn't kill them since it was toxic in high concentrations. This was before closed circuit cameras. This was before closed circuit cameras so they had... That doesn't make any sense. This was before closed circuit cameras so they had only microphones and five inch thick glass porthole sized windows into the chamber to monitor them. I'm so sorry. Um, the chamber was stocked with books, cots to sleep on but no bedding, running water and toilet, and enough dried food to last all five for over a month. Play like bits of all. I feel it's going to take an incredibly dramatic turn. <laughs> oh, I remember the other one I wanted to read you. I'm sorry, I'm just remembering all the really good ones. There are so many. Mm -hmm. um, the test subjects were political prisoners deemed enemies of the state during World War II. Everything was fine for the first five days. The subjects hardly complained about having been promised falsely that they would be freed if they submitted to the test and did not sleep for 30 days. Oh, damn. I don't remember that bit. They're going to keep them even after keeping them awake for 30 days. That's a bit shit. I thought it was 15 <coughs> days. No, 30, apparently. Wait. Oh! Oh, they kept them awake for 15 days. But I'm guessing some... I just heard a bang. But I'm guessing something happened that stopped them keeping them awake for 30. Oh. <laughs> I have read this before, it's worth mentioning. This is what I do with my free time. Um, <laughs> anyway. Um, their conversations and activities were monitored and it was noted that they continued to talk about increasingly traumatic incidents in their past. A general tone of their conversations took on a dark aspect after the fourth day mark. After five days, they started to complain about the circumstances and, and events that led them to where they were and started to demonstrate severe paranoia. They stopped talking to each other and began alternately whispering to the microphones and one main mirrored portholes. Oddly, they all seemed to think they could win the trust of the experimenters by turning over their comrades the other subjects in captivity with them. At first the researchers suspected this was an effect of the gas itself. After nine days the first of them started screaming. He ran the length of the chamber repeatedly yelling at the top of his lungs for three hours straight. He continued attempting to scream but was only able to produce an occasional squeak. I can hear Baggy from down the doors. I'm pissed terrified. I'll just stab them, it's fine. Legit, I am jumping straight out that window and I running really to the house. Um, the researchers postulated that he had physically torn his vocal cords. The most surprising thing about this behaviour is how the other captives reacted to it, or rather, didn't react Ooh, to it. Oh, God. Mm. Um, they continued whispering to the microphones until the second of the captives started screaming. The two non-screaming captives took the books apart, smeared page after page with their own feces, and patted Ew. them calmly over the glass portholes. Calmly? Mm, just How can you be calm? Just... <laughs> wipe, wipe, wipe. Vanish. I mean, literally, you'd be... You'd, you'd, what? I don't get that. These people aren't alright. Of course they're not. 
The screaming promptly stopped. So did the whispering in the microphone. Okay, that door is scaring the shit out of me. Can we close it? That's worse, trust. <laughs> Why are we doing this? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking bitch! I'm okay. It's not the first time I've ended up on the floor today. Hashtag Oscar's channel. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love Oscar. Um... After three more days passed, the researchers checked the microphones hourly to make sure they were working, since they thought it was thought it impossible that no sound could be coming with five people inside. The oxygen consumption in the chamber indicated that all five must still be alive. In fact, it was the amount of oxygen five people would consume at a very heavy level of strenuous exercise. On the morning of the 15th day, the researchers did something they said they would not do to get a reaction from the captives. They used the intercom inside the chamber, hoping to provoke any response from the captives, as they were afraid were either dead or vegetables. They announced... Vegetables. <laughs> vegetables. No. That's me. Dory. Hashtag Dory Squad! Woo! Oh my god, that should be your channel name. That's my hashtag. Click subscribe to join the Dory Squad. <laughs> and become a dumbass today. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. They announced, we are opening the chamber to test the microphone. Step away from the door and lie flat on the floor or you will be shot. Compliance will earn you earn one of your you your immediate freedom. To their Only surprise. One. Yeah. One out of five. You know what? I just see you wenties. Um, to their surprise, they heard a single phrase in a calm voice respond, we no longer want to be freed. Debate broke out amongst the researchers and the military forces funding the research. Unable to provoke any more responses using the intercom, it was finally decided to open the chamber at midnight on the 15th day. The chamber was flushed on the stimulant gas and filled with fresh air and immediately voices from the microphones began to, began to object. Three different voices that... Don't you fucking touch my foot! Stop rocking the camera then, it's scaring me! Oh, I'm so sorry! It's fine. I'm, I'm a fucking ninja. I'm terrified. <gasps> ah! yeah. uh, okay, well let's carry on. Yeah. What happens the other five days? God. Honestly, it's fine. You're home alone right now? Well, In your big ass fucking mansion? Everyone was at a mansion. Right? It fucking is. Have you never seen the size of your house? Have you never been in a peasant's house before, you fucking queen? Um, three different voices began beginning. That doesn't make <laughs> sense, but okay. Began beginning. If there are any English teachers out there, I'm sorry, I didn't write this. As if pleading for the life of loved ones to turn the gas back on. Oh my god. The chamber was opened and soldiers sent in to retrieve the test subjects. They began to scream louder than ever, and so did the soldiers when they saw what was inside. Four of the five subjects were still alive, although no one could rightly call a state that any of them in life. That, that any of them... That, oh, this doesn't... such bad grammar! Um, the food rations past day five had not been so much as touched. There were chunks of meat from the dead test subjects' thighs and chest stuffed into the drain in the centre of the chamber, blocking the drain and allowing four inches of water to accumulate on the floor. Precisely how much of the water on the floor was actually blood was never determined. All four surviving test subjects also had large portions of muscle and skin torn away from their bodies. Mm. The destruction of flesh and exposed bone on their fingertips indicated that the wounds were inflicted by hand, not with teeth, as the researchers initially thought. Closer examination of the position and angles of the wound indicated that most, if not all of them, were self-inflicted. Oh no, man! The abdominal organs below the ribcage of all four test subjects had been removed, while the heart, lungs and diaphragm remained in place. The skin and most of the muscle attached to the ribs had been ripped off, exposing the lungs through the ribcage. All the blood vessels and organs remained intact. They had just been taken out and laid on the floor, fanning around the 
eviscerated but still living bodies of the subjects. The digestive tracts of all four could be seen to be working, digesting food. It quickly became apparent that what they were digesting was their own flesh that they had ripped off and eaten over the course of days. Most of the soldiers were Russian special operatives at the facility, but still many refused to return to the chamber to remove the test subjects. They continued to scream to be left in the chamber, and alternately begged and demanded that the gas be turned back on, lest they fall asleep. Stop. We'll go to charge the camera. Okay. Um, to everyone's surprise, the test subjects put up a fierce fight in the process of being removed from the chamber. One of the Russian soldiers died from having his throat ripped out. Another was gravely injured by having his testicles ripped off. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'd like to do Sorry, that to boys a certain out there. teacher. Oh uh, my god, yes! <laughs> fucking dickhead. We Sorry. know who we're talking about. <laughs> if you know us, you probably know too. Um, and an artery in his leg severed by one of the subject's teeth. Another five of the soldiers lost their lives if you count the ones that committed suicide in the weeks following the incident. PTSA much? D PTSD. PTSD. <sighs> Sorry. PDSA is a pet charity. <laughs> I'm not taking the mick out of people with PDSA. I thought you meant PDA for a minute. Public displays of affection. <laughs> no one shows me affection in public. Am I not lovable? <laughs> Somebody love me! I'm kidding. I'm fine. Oh! Oh, yes. Okay, let's do this. We came up with a term. Gay bays. That was it. We're gay bays. <laughs> gay bears. Care bears. Oh, fuck my finger. Um, pity you. Um, in this struggle, one of the four living... <laughs> oh, it's gonna shit out of me. Um, in the struggle, one of the four living subjects had its spleen, has his spleen, spl <laughs> <laughs> spleen! Um, in the struggle, one of the four living subjects had his spleen ruptured and he bled out almost immediately. The medical researchers attempted to sedate him, but this proved to be impossible. He was injected with more than ten times the human dose of, mor of a morphine derivative. Derivative. Derivative, thank you. Um, and still fought like a cornered animal, breaking the ribs and arms of one of the doctors. Ooh. When his heart was seen to be beat for a full two minutes after he had bled out to the point there was more air in his vascular system than blood. When... Oh, such bad grammar, sorry. Even after it stopped, he continued to scream and flail for another three minutes, struggling to attack anyone in reach, just repeating the word more over and over weaker and weaker until he finally fell silent. That's like headless chickens. If you cut a chicken's head off, it will keep running around for a bit. You know when they say like you're running around like a headless chicken? That's what chickens do. <clears throat> the surviving- oh fucking hell. The surviving three test subjects were heavily restrained and moved to a medical facility. The two with intact vocal cords continuously begged for the gas, demanding to be kept awake. The most injured of the three was taken to the only surgical operating room that the facility had. In the process of preparing the subject to have his organs placed back within his body, it was found that he was effectively immune to the sedatives they had given him to prepare him for the surgery. He fought furiously against his restraints. When the anaesthetic gas was brought out to put him under, he managed to tear most of the, f the way through a four-inch wide leather strap on one wrist, even through the weight of a 200 pound soldier holding that wrist as well. It took only a little more anaesthetic than normal to put him under, and the instant his eyelids fluttered closed, his heart stopped. In the autopsy of the test subject that died on the operating table, it was found that his blood had tripled um, the normal levels of oxygen. His muscles that were still attached to his skeleton were badly torn, and he, he had broken nine bones in his struggle to not be subdued. Most of them were were from the force of his own muscles had exerted on them. Sorry, can't read. Damn door. The second survivor had been the first of the group of five to start screaming. His vocal cords destroyed, he was unable to beg or object surgery, and he only reacted by shaking his head violently in disapproval when the anaesthetic gas was brought near him. He shook his head, yes, when someone suggested reluctantly that they try surgery without anaesthetic, and did not react for the entire six-hour procedure of replacing his abdominal organs. 
organs and attempting to cover them with what remained of his skin. The surgeon pres uh, presidingly stated repeatedly that it should be medically possible that it should be medically possible for the patient to still be alive. One terrified nurse assisting the surgery stated that, that, that she had seen the patient's mouth curl into a smile several times whenever his eyes met hers. Um, when the surgery ended, the subject looked at the surgeon and began to wheeze loudly, attempting to talk while struggling. Assuming this must be something of drastic importance, the surgeon had a pen and pad and fetched it so the patient could write his message. It was simple. Keep cutting. The other two test subjects were given the same surgery, both without anaesthetic as well. Although they had to be injected with a para... paralytic... Paralytic. What? Paralytic. Paralytic. Reading is supposed to be like the only thing I'm good at when it comes to English. I can't even do that. I'm sorry. Um, paralytic for the duration of the operation. The surgeon found it impossible to perform the operation while the patient laughed continuously. Once paralysed, the subjects could only follow the attending researchers with their eyes. The paralytic cleared their systems in an abnormally short period of time, and they were soon trying to escape their bounds, bonds. The moment they could speak, they were, ask, they were again asking for the stimulant gas. The researchers tried asking why they had injured themselves, why they had ripped out their own guts, and what they wanted to be given the gas, why they wanted to be given the gas again. Only one response was given, I must remain awake. Why did this make me think of drugs? I have no idea. I literally don't know. That's really weird. <laughs> and also, honestly, I just think it's you. <laughs> oh God. All the three subjects' restraints were reinforced and they were placed back into the chamber awaiting determination as to what should be done with them. The researchers, facing the wrath of the military benefactors, for having failed the stated goals of their project, considered euthanizing the surviving subjects. The commanding officer, an ex-KGB, instead saw potential and wanted to see what would happen if they were put back on the gas. The researchers strongly objected, but were overruled. <laughs> mm. In preparation for being sealed in the chamber again, the subjects were connected to an EEG monitor and had their restraints padded for long-term confinement. For everyone's surprise, all three stopped struggling the moment it was let slip that they were going back on the gas. It was obvious that at this point all three were putting up a great struggle to stay awake. One of the subjects that could speak was humming loudly and continuously. The mute subject was straining his legs against the, leg bond, the leather bonds with all his might, first left, then right, then left again for something to focus on. The remaining subject was holding his head off his pillow and blinking rapidly. That actually sends you to sleep. Yeah, it does. Because if your eyes are tired, it'll make you think you're tired. You yeah. To sleep, so that's kind of dumb. Please don't kill me in my sleep. Um, oh, below that. Having been the first to be wired for EEG, most of the researchers were monitoring his brain waves in surprise. They were normal most of the time, but sometimes flatlined in its spick inexplicably. It looked as if he were repeatedly suffering brain death before returning to normal. As they focused on paper scrolling out of the brain wave monitor, only one nurse saw his eyelids slip shut at the same moment his head hit the pillow. His brain waves immediately changed to that of a deep sleep, then flatlined for the last time as his heart simultaneously stopped. That's a bit sad. Aww. The only remaining subject that could speak started screaming to be sealed in now. His brain waves showed the same flat line as the one who had just died from falling asleep. The commander gave the order to seal the chamber with both subjects inside, as well as three researchers. Oh, that ain't gonna end well. No, of course not. After all the ripping apart and whatnot that's been going on, you know. Yeah. Oh, God. Um... One of the named three immediately drew his gun and shot the commander point blank. Wait, what? Point blank. See the um, One of the named three immediately drew his gun and shot the commander point blank between the eyes, then turned the gun on the mute subject and blew his brains out as well. Oh, shame. He pointed the gun at the remaining subject, still restrained to a bed, as the remaining members of the medical and research team fled the room. I won't be lock in, locked in here with these things. Not with you, he screamed at the man trapped to the table. 
What are you? he demanded. I must know. The subject smiled. Have you forgotten so easily? The subject asked. We are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all, begging to be three at every moment in your deepest animal mind. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go to the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread. The researcher paused, then aimed the subject's heart and fired. The EEG flatlined, and so the, so the subject weakly choked out so nearly free. Wow. Dang.